Hello and welcome to this lesson for Higher Biology, which today is looking at conformers and regulators. So previous to now, we've been looking at metabolic rate, how it's measured, and the fact that in order to maintain their metabolic rate, organisms require a steady supply of oxygen delivered through their cardiovascular systems. Today, we're going to move on to look at conformers and regulators, essentially different types of organism, uh, which have different approaches to maintaining that metabolic rate. And then we'll move on to look at a few more specific details of thermal regulation or maintaining their temperature. So what we're looking at today is to be able to understand how different types of organisms maintain their metabolic rate. First of all, giving examples of external factors that influence the metabolic rate, defining what we mean by a conformer and regulator, and giving examples of species in these categories, describing the response of conformers to changing environmental conditions, and describing the response of regulators to changing environmental conditions. So essentially what we're focusing on is the metabolic rate and the environment and the fact that the ability of an organism to maintain its metabolic rate is going to be affected by external abiotic factors. Remember, an abiotic factor is a non-living factor, usually some kind of environmental factor. So the environment that an organism exists in can change very quickly. So you could have rain, wind, sunlight, cloud cover, etc. will all influence the environmental conditions that are around. Additionally, we can also have more seasonal changes, um, depending on the climate that the organism is living in. And we also have potentially longer timescales. Um, continental drift, for example, has influenced the environment that different organisms are living in. We're currently undergoing um, significant climate change impacts. And those are all creating different environmental conditions that organisms need to be able to adjust to. So most organisms have evolved ways to be able to adjust to those specific changes, whether they be um, immediate changes or long-term, more seasonal changes. However, these changes can actually cause some physical stress to the organism, particularly where the condition is outside of what we would consider to be their normal physiological range, the ability that they're able to maintain within. And what organisms do during these periods of change is a process referred to as homeostasis, which you have seen at National 5 before. So essentially the fact that despite we've the changes that there are in this inter external environment, organisms are trying to maintain a constant internal environment. And therefore they must adapt to maintain that or they become restricted within a very small habitat. So essentially, the process of homeostasis looks at having a variety of different behavioural and physiological mechanisms in order to maintain this constant internal environment. So if you have um, an individual who's becoming too hot, um, that's referred to as their stimulus, which creates some kind of response in a feedback loop. And that response could be physiological, it could be sweating, or it could be behavioural, it could be moving to a cooler area. Similarly, we have another um, stimulus of being too cold. And again, we have both physiological and behavioural responses. If you're too cold, you might shiver, you might get goosebumps. Um, and your behavioural responses, you may go and put warmer clothing on or move to somewhere where it's warmer. So those are good examples in terms of temperature of how you may manage both behavioural and physiological changes. And the difference between conformers and regulators is essentially the fact that they are going to carry out slightly different ones depending on how they need to respond. So conformers particularly tend to be uh, marine animals and amphibians and reptiles, essentially because a conformer's internal environment depends on its external environment. And that essentially means that their internal conditions are controlled by the in environmental conditions. If it's colder outside, they're going to be colder. They will have a colder body, body temperature. If it's warmer outside, they will have a warmer body temperature. And conformers usually use behavioural responses to maintain their optimum metabolic rate. So that allows them to sort of tolerate variation in their external environment. So if it's becoming warmer, they can move to somewhere it's colder and vice versa. However, you can also see that there is changes to something called osmolarity. 
and that's essentially the quantity of dissolved ions in water essentially how salty usually that water can be so conformers tend to be osmoconformers particularly our marine animals and essentially what that means is they have body fluids that are at the same osmorality as their surroundings so essentially they have the same quantity of dissolved ions in water as they have in their internal structures their bodily fluids have the same osmolarity and essentially that means they don't have any need for structures like kidneys but it does mean that if the salt content of the water surrounding them changes significantly and suddenly that will disrupt their internal metabolism however that's a relatively rare occurrence and not something that they frequently have to deal with we also have thermal conformers. So they are animals that cannot regulate their body temperature internally. And that affects most insects and reptiles. And their most frequent method of control is about adapted behavior. So they're most likely to change their behavior. As you can see, if we're looking at a lizard's body temperature over a specific time of day, it mimics very closely the curve of the air temperature. So their body temperature is is have a, has a very similar shape to their graph um, as our air temperature does and their behaviours um, are going to help maintain that or change that should they need to should they get too warm or should they get too cold so for example you may see them um, getting wet to help allow them to lose some heat they may um, try and lose or gain heat near an airflow um, they may try and lose or gain heat through conduction, lying next to something colder or warmer surface or material. Um, they may use radiation, so finding shade or lying on hot rocks, for example. And the biggest advantage of this behaviour is that they don't require to use up a lot of energy to maintain a steady body temperature. Um, therefore, their food and energy requirement is tends to be lower. That means they can survive um, more erratic temperatures, more changeable temperatures and more erratic food supplies and that increases their chance of survival however if their temperature rises they will require more food available because their metabolic rate will actually increase as the temperature increases regulators on the other hand are organisms which use metabolic means to regulate their internal environments in responsible in response to external environmental changes so they expend quite a lot of energy um, which is powering specialist organs and body systems and the advantage of this it allows them these organisms can live more independently of the inter external environment and can occupy quite a wide range of ecological niches so they have more variety in terms of the environments that they're able to live in and as was said maintaining that steady internal environment is referred to as homeostasis and we need energy to be able to achieve that homeostasis um, meaning that our regulators have higher metabolic costs really than conformers. Um, most of them are osmoregulators. So as we were talking about osmolarity previously with our um, marine animals, um, we have our individuals which are osmoregulators. And that essentially means that their bodily fluids are maintained at the same osmolarity, the same saltiness or ion concentration levels within the body fluids as a result of them being able to regulate their internal osmolarity by excreting excess water or taking in additional water. So there's a variety of different mechanisms used across different species in order for them to be able to do that. We also have quite a lot of detail in terms of the regulators and their thermal regulation, how they maintain a constant internal body temperature regardless of the two specific types of temperature they may have externally whether it's very very hot or very very cold and you will have looked at some of this at national five but we will be going on to look at this in the next lesson in a little bit more detail and overall there's a few advantages and disadvantages to being either a conformer or a regulator if you're a conformer, your main advantage is that you're conserving energy by not actually going through any of these homeostatic processes. You're not changing your internal environment. It's, it's, it's fluctuating with the external environment. 
However, the disadvantage of that means that they can only survive in a limited range of habitats. They can't actually manage an environment that is significantly different to what they are normally adapted to. On the other hand, regulators are able to exploit a larger range of had habitats. They're able to maintain their osmolarity internally um, and by excreting or taking in external water and they're able to maintain their thermal regularity, their temperature, by carrying out behavioural or physiological mechanisms. However, on the other hand, that uses up a lot more energy than conformers do um, in order to manage all of those processes. We use up more energy maintaining the internal environment of a regulator. So from that, you should be able to give e examples of external factors that influence metabolic rate, essentially those abiotic factors that we looked at at National 5. You should be able to state that the differences between conformers and regulators is that conformers are more influenced by their external environment. The, their internal environment fluctuates along with the external environment, whereas regulators use metabolic means to regulate their internal environment depending on the external changes. That response of conformers to changing environmental conditions is that their body systems are able to fluctuate with those changing environmental conditions. They may have behavioural um, adaptations that allow them to help maintain those internal conditions as well. And that the response of regulators to changing environmental conditions can be both physiological and behavioural in terms of helping maintain their internal systems. And we're going to go on and look at that in a little bit more detail in terms of thermal regulation in the next lesson.